Hello everyone, my name is Pritham Paul and welcome to another video. Uh, this is the another video of the playlist tree and uh, in this video I am going to talk about threaded binary tree. Now what threaded binary tree is? Okay, we have uh, gone through binary tree, we have gone through binary search tree. Now we will be talking about threaded binary tree. Okay, so now first of all let me discuss about the binary tree or binary search tree whatever it is and its disadvantages what is the problem we are facing with binary tree while implementing and why like how to solve those issues and how the threaded binary tree concept has come okay we have uh, like done the traversal of binary tree in two ways one of the like in uh, in recursive and non in non recursive way we can do it we ha i know we haven't talked about the coding part okay but in the like recursive thing how it would be happening like for example uh, for example this is a bina uh, binary tree okay okay so now if you want to traverse like for example pre order then we are going to print this one then we are going to call this recursive function for this left subtree and then we will call the re uh, recursive function function recursively for the uh, right subtree okay so in this way we used to do it like in in case of recursion there would be a dynamic stack okay there would be a dynamic stack which would be stored in the heap section of the memory if the memory is here there are few sections and here there is a uh, like a divider you can say according to the requirement it can shift in the down side or in the upper side the upper side is called stack and the down down part is called heap so whatever uh, actually creates dynamically that stores in heaps and whatever uh, cre we create statically it uh, stores in stack section okay that is called the stack section that is called the heap section okay so now uh, dynamically we create lot of function calls while doing any recursive function okay and for example uh, any recursive function for example void abc okay of n for example yeah, integer n so if we say if if n equal equal 0 then return and uh, else for example abc of n minus 1 we used to call isn't it so this is a recursive call of the entire function this is the recursion right so in case of uh, recursion what happens that dynamically this function has been called so the in the dynamic stack one function called abc of n is there here would be abc of n minus 1 n minus 2 n minus 3 dot 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 abc of 1 or abc of 0 would be called in such a way right so it needs a dynamic stack to store all the function calls isn't it and in case of static what happens that we used to call like integer uh, for example integer let's take it stack of some size we used to put okay some size we used to put so this is the static static means it would be stored in stack like it would all obviously it would be declared the size and accordingly we used to push or pop the data okay so this is called the static uh, memory locations or static stack and in case of recursion the dynamic stack would be used okay now let's not uh, talk about that so we need to understand one thing that when we are uh, calling the recursive functions to traverse any binary tree what happens that dynamically stack has been created huh? the push and pop it's happening that's fine and both type of algorithm require the use of stack that is also true yeah static or dynamic whatever it is the space is needed no space is needed o of n time complexity space sorry space complexity is needed so traversal is a very common operation okay if you use stack all the time obviously it is going to take more space and obviously this is not efficient so to overcome this issue to reduce the time complexity okay we need we need to do something so that we do not need to like create the stack and push uh, push and pop operation every single time okay so that's how the threaded binary tree concept came okay the thing is uh, like the traversal can be implemented more efficiently okay if we can avoid the use of stack if we can avoid, avoid the use of stack obviously space complexity would be reduced and we can do this by maintaining threads in binary tree now what are threads let me let me draw a binary tree and let me explain it to you guys okay 
what is a thread first of all uh, let me like talk about some uh, features first like a binary tree with n nodes has two n pointers out of which n plus one always null this is the property 11 which i have talked about okay how for example let me draw a tree and let me know okay uh, for example So this is the structure of a binary tree where all the nodes are having alphabets A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Okay. Now let's uh, count. Okay. Let's count the number of pointers. Okay. So obviously if the uh, nodes like if there are N nodes. So now N is the number of nodes which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then obviously total number of pointers would be 2 into N. Okay. Number of pointers would be 2N that's true that means 14 okay now n plus 1 always null see 1 2 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 see so always null null is 8 that means what that means p minus n which is 14 minus 8 equal to 6 6 pointers are having the addresses and 8 pointers are null okay fine okay now we can use these uh, null pointers okay to create the threads how that is the most important thing okay so a left null pointer can be used to store the address of the in order preceder and a right null pointer can be used to store the address of the in order successor of the node okay these are the concepts a so a left null pointer can be used to store the in order preceder and then the right uh, null pointer can be used to store the in order successor so now what would be the in order traversal here obviously d would come first then b then f then g sorry e then g then a and then c correct now if the right pointer of d would point to b right pointer of f would be pointing to e and the right pointer of g would be pointing to a and if the left pointer of c would be pointing to a and the right po left pointer of g would be pointing to e and then the right pointer of sorry left pointer of f would be pointing to b then you can see what would be the scenario okay try to understand the concepts here just one second this is the concept right so uh, this color means right pointer and that color means left pointer okay now if it happens then what will happen let me draw that re again Now, what was that? The let me copy it from this page to that page. Okay, see. So here, this is uh, we are having. Now, what I was saying? The right pointer of D would be pointing to B. That means D would be pointing to B. Okay, let me uh, put the addresses here again so that it would be very clear. So there it would be 200, it would be 300, it would be 400, it would be 500, it would be 600 and it would be 700 and rest of the things are null. So now let's not make it null and let, let's let implement the right pointers. Okay, F right pointer would be pointing to E. Okay, and then uh, G's right pointer would be pointing to A. Okay. 
now let's implement that one c's left pointer is pointing to a okay then g's left pointer is pointing to e okay then f's left pointer is pointing to b okay this is the inoda traversal by the way and this is the inoda successor these are the inoda preceder okay in this is the direction isn't it so now uh if like for example we have done it right now what are remaining this one and that one except them okay everyone like uh this is mean this means 100 this means uh 100 this means 500 this means 500 this means 200 and this means also 200 okay so these are called threads okay which i have created now these 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 are called threads now what is the benefit of having these threads okay when you come down like for example uh, if you like r equal equal root for example now if you say r r arrow left okay equal to for example r equal to r arrow left it would, it would be coming here then again from r equal to r arrow left it would be coming here but there is no way to come back to the parent positions see there is no way but using this thread now if we use this pointer it is null this is null if we use it then we can easily go to the parent direction see parents so what is the purpose of it what is the like why i am using this in order traversal and in order successors and in order preceders why because by using if a pointer is pointing to this see this next okay this next this next then this next and this next from here i can directly access this one even from here also i can directly access this one how from here to here yeah here to here here to here directly for example from here to here here to here here to here here to here so every from every node we can access every node if we know the path correct so this is the thing if we use an like for example array of pointers where all the addresses would be there if we can code in such a way we can easily direct uh, like obviously we can access it someday like or uh, not now uh, this is not in the basic uh, thing like for uh, like for having fun we will code it don't worry we will code it and we will try to uh, implement it in such a way that we can easily access this one from this one i will show you guys don't worry after and after uh, like completing the whole thing which i have told you guys those indexes every single thing we, after completing all those things we will talk about it okay now this is called what it is this is called fully in threaded binary tree this is exactly called fully in fully in threaded binary tree this is called fully in threaded binary tree okay now uh, there are two types of uh, threaded binary tree more okay which one is right in threaded binary tree and the one is left in threaded binary tree okay for example if i okay if i delete those pink lines and uh, we i put it them like uh, null for example i put them on null i put them null only right pointers would be used as threads not the left pointers then that is called right in threaded binary tree if only left pointers okay would be used uh, for threads then obviously that is called left in threaded binary tree okay let me show you let me copy this so if i remove them and if i uh, if i remove them and put them on like null so and this is called right threaded binary tree okay and
if I remove them and put them null the right pointers if I put them on null then this is called left in threaded binary tree why because the left pointer is being used left in threaded binary tree clear so if the left point left pointers would be used for threading then obviously it's left in threaded if the right pointers would be used it would be right in threaded and if all the uh, like all the pointers except this pointer and except that pointer okay if uh, except them every pointer would be used then obviously uh, it is going to be a uh, full in threaded binary tree and what would be the structure of these nodes what would be the structure of these nodes this node will have actually not like this actually this will contain like this okay so this would be the data okay this would be bool actually it's integer or character whatever it is it doesn't matter data it's bool or boolean lt left threaded it's going to be bool rt okay that means right threaded okay this is going to uh, left pointer lp and this is going to right pointer rp this is the thing these are the five datas which we will be having okay so obviously the code will be like this struct node okay so i am writing in c now or c++ you can say left then bool lt then for example i am taking integer data then obviously bool rt and then struct node asterisk right yeah struct node asterisk right so this is the uh, structure of the node see this is the structure of the node which we have to implement in threaded binary tree you will ask that why this boolean thing and all we will talk about it later while we will be uh, doing the coding part the boolean is very very important okay now uh, there would be like insertion deletion operation here as well uh, but uh, i will not discuss about it right now this is a concept of threaded binary tree which you need to know first by the way why i am skipping all these things and i will be telling that i will be discussing it later there is a reason for that if you are a complete beginner i do not want you to be stressed like how much tough the data structures are that's why i am trying to uh, like explain all these things in a simple language in a easier way so that your like the fear of data structures i have seen in many students mind that's why i'm just trying to figure it out that so that you are not having any fear regarding the data structure that's why i'm just trying to explain in the simplest way i can when i will be uh, touching the coding part trust me you will love it like i will explain in such a way that there will be no like no corner that you have you will not understand that's not possible okay so from my experience of teaching the students i'm telling you confidently that you will enjoy don't worry and stay with the playlist and watch these videos properly okay and let me know in the comment section if any kind of doubt is there so this is much for today like i think uh, it's like so time bahut zyada ho gaya so let me end the video and in the next video we will talk about uh, some other topic okay see you in the next video guys please do hit the subscribe button for sure if you haven't subscribed yet